everyone, and season's greetings. Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you for being a part of the program this last Friday before Christmas. A great deal of news to cover. I know I say that quite often, but here as of late, uh, it's a pace that I don't know is sustainable all the time, but working very hard to bring you as much news as possible. And tonight we'll do so with coverage of the Johnson County Fiscal Court meeting earlier this week, Paintsville City Council meeting earlier this week, of course, pre-indictment for Mayor Bob Porter. Uh, more on the folks who were still outstanding in some blowing flurries and snow earlier today in front of the Johnson County Board of Education. An update there, they're putting out a few calls to some specific people to help in their cause, and even on our state's highest level. Some basketball updates. I know I haven't I haven't taken any game in any games as of yet. Uh, with all the news happening here as of late, and keeping up with or trying to at least Andrews ball game is middle school tournament tonight. Oh, by the way, a reason I'm taping this show very early and out the door at 4:30, mind you. I haven't seen much high school basketball. I'll get you caught up on some recent scores and schedules in just a few moments. And uh, we've also received word on services to be held from the young for the young. Johnson County man in his honor that died in that logging accident here in McGoffin County earlier this week and some other news and information to leave you with before I leave you for the weekend. We'll begin with coverage of the Johnson County Fiscal Court earlier from earlier this week. It was definitely a good news, bad news situation. I think uh, as far as the financial aspects, the bad news perhaps outweighed that of the good. There was some good news, however, and it came via initially $200,000 in state road aid funds. While much of the financial discussion that took place in the regular session meeting was not of a positive note, whether it be talking about the tightening of budgets for the clerk's office where they had managed to cut back about $102,000 in expenditures in the county clerk's office, or the Sheriff's Department, which was also operating on a similar budget as to last year in an effort to save money for the county. There was some good news that came in the form of a couple of announcements. One, that the fiscal court had requested that the state might be able to help them with the purchase of some much-needed equipment for the road department, and they actually stepped up with about $75,000, of which they purchased two new snow plows with salt spreaders and a third fleet vehicle that the judge said they were forever grateful for. He also said that a Hail Mary, so to speak, that they threw just moments before the Bashir administration left office turned out to pay off with more than $200,000 in assistance to help fix Johnson County roads. Daniel citing that there were already three disaster declarations still open from February, March, and April when the terrible July flooding hit parts of Johnson County, further damaging roads and bridges, and that a special request just before the Bashir administration left office did pay off, also one they were very grateful to accept. I hand carried the, uh, the uh, uh, resolution down to Frankfurt uh, the following day, uh, got it to them. They got it out uh, on Friday uh, before Tuesday. We got, the mail, we got the thing in the mail about the same day that that uh, of course we had a copy, an electronic copy of it, but we got the the original signed document back from DOT uh, the day before the uh, the transfer of power. So we have a uh, an allocation of two hundred and nine thousand dollars on uh, uh, from the governor's budget, his personal discretionary funds that w that was payable through the uh, the DOT. We're extremely happy that uh, that they were able to do that. We certainly thank Secretary Hancock uh, uh, at uh, the cabinet, and certainly thank Governor Bashir for remembering that uh, we had made those requests and and for being able to try to do something at the last hour. And and uh, we do appreciate that. In other discussion of money matters, the judge did note the declining tax base that the. County of Johnson is still managing to pay fringe benefits for the employees, pensions, if you will, citing that that was a worry for some time down the future if the economy does not make a turn. But as of right now, they're able to keep up with payments and keep the books balanced, so to speak. And in addition, as I said earlier, to approving the clerk's third quarter budget, as well as approving the first reading of the sheriff's fiscal year 2016 budget, 
They also discussed some other money matters, with the judge addressing the former Johnson County Rescue Squad, reminding everyone how several months ago some individuals associated with the organization left the county and basically walked out on the organization, and it folded. It has left the county trying to sort through a great deal of liens on property, on vehicles, trying to determine how much money is owed, what kind of condition a lot of the equipment is in, much of it poor, with still bills coming in today citing that they received a bill for some $5,000 just this week that they were unaware of that existed. And now we're trying to accumulate as much information and records as we can about exactly what's out there, what do they own, uh, what don't they own, what's encumbered by liens, uh, how much are these assets worth, how much are their debts that are owed, and whether or not there's going to be anywhere close to sufficient. Uh, if you sell the assets, are you going to get anywhere close to the money that you're going to need to pay the debts? But we're in the middle of that process right now. Uh, it's been going on now for several months, and and uh, Mike and my office staff and, and uh, I've been involved talking to a lot of people. <clears throat> USDA has a uh, a lien probably a, that's that probably uh, outranks the other liens out there on the rest of the equipment on two pieces of equipment that we've bid set out for bids and we've already awarded bids on. Uh, there's another company that has some liens on some other equipment and, and Mike has filed he's filed the action with uh, he's filed action with the court to uh, have those people claim the property that they have under lien and then we're trying to dispose of everything else so uh, that's about what I learned yesterday that Paintsville Mayor Bob Porter as well as former utilities manager Larry Harold are both under federal indictment. We'll go back to this past Monday night's regular session of the Paintsville City Council. It began initially with some remarks from Councilman Sean Thompson. He was voicing his concerns about a significant budget shortfall with the Paintsville Ran Ambulance Service to the tune of about $200,000. Based on the current ambulance receipts, we're going to, based on our budget, kind of run into considerable shortfall. Um, I mean, currently we have budget revenue at 1.4, and uh, based on to date, I mean, of course, I don't know how you figure ambulance receipts because it's not like you can increase, but we're going to be at 1.29. Um, and, and so, with that said, you know, since there's going to be a shortfall, a considerable shortfall in ambulance receipts, have we done anything to adjust the expenditures on ambulance costs? We had a, I had a meeting with Rick Friday, Thursday or Friday, and uh, uh, the problem is the, the, uh, the costs pretty much are there and there's not much we can do about it. Because you got to have crews, but he's looking into if there's any way we can cut back some shifts or something of that nature. The the shortfall in the revenue is not as a result of fewer ambulance runs or activity. Right, fewer payment from it, the government. It's yes. a result of Medicaid particularly being harder and harder to collect. Thompson requested that maybe the mayor and Chief Ratliff draw up some proposals to address the problem possibly examining a 47% overtime rate, or maybe even limiting runs outside the city limits of Paintsville. The mayor also added a third option of possibly selling the service, all to be discussed later. The council voted to accept bids on a new 911 recording system contingent on the receipt of grant funds in total of $26,551 and some change. The mayor said that the Paintsville Main Street Tourism Organization had voted to pay for two veterans parking spaces in downtown Paintsville, one designated for a disabled American veteran, the other for any veterans to be able to park in the downtown area. And lastly is a special recognition of the Paintsville City Police Officer of the Year. Each year, Chief Holbrook requests that his department submits names to him for an individual amongst their ranks to be recognized. However, this year, they turn the tables on the chief, so to speak. At this time, I'd like to present our Police Officer of the Year 
and I am very proud to present Chief Bill Holbrook with the Police Officer of the Year Award. <laughs> Let me say that uh, generally that Police Officer of the Year Award is presented at the Policeman Christmas Party, but uh, the all the officers, and I think there was a una unanimous vote, unanimous from, the, vote. from the officers on that award, and they just felt like they wanted to do it to the, with the public mm. involved. And while we're at it, I've got a couple of little things here I'd like to present to Mr. Holbrook. I have a uh, certificate of merit. Presented, I smudged my signature there. <laughs> certificate of merit presented to Chief Bill Holbrook for his leadership, working strenuous hours during the Route 40 flooding on February 15, 2015. And also a certificate of valor presented to Chief Bill Holbrook for his leadership, hard work, and excelling above and beyond the call of duty during the deadly flooding in Johnson County on July 13, 2015. Uh, Chief, thank you very much for your work. We appreciate, appreciate you. you. And there's your... We, we've got a good department. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we have moved to the new place on Main Street. Uh, we've outfitted the fleet with three brand new cars from drug seizures. Uh, the officers, everyone, have a brand new ballistic vest thanks to, thanks to a grant from uh, Regina's RDA grant, I believe. LEPP. LEPP. -E <laughs> uh, we're growing, but we're going to continue to grow and we're going to protect our community. And I thank my officers for this as we've added everybody, Nick Taylor, we've added Brad Caldwell, and Zach Stapleton is still in the academy, scheduled to graduate in February. Full has been there since August. So it's a 23 week academy now, so that will put our department at the full complement of 10. And I thank my officers for this. Uh, I'll accept this on behalf of you because without you, I am nothing. I thank you for allowing me to be in this position and I appreciate the hard work and dedication you provide to this city. So thank you. Thank you everybody. Wrapping up this report by going back to the mayor's situation, there is still no official date right now that we are aware of for he and Larry Harold to appear in court for misappropriating federal property, which carries a maximum penalty of 10 years, as well as giving false statements to the federal agents and involved in the investigation, which carries a maximum penalty of five years, the latter charge of which Harold is also facing. But that does come, of course, after a federal grand jury in London returned an indictment yesterday charging Mayor Porter and Harold, the former general manager of the Paintsville Utilities Commission, with two counts of theft of governmental property, as well as Harold being charged with intentionally making false statements to the FBI. Citing investigation that stems or that says from 2009 to 2012, Porter, with the help and assistance of Harold, didn't pay for any utility services at any of the residences owned by Porter in totaling more than $7,000 in delinquent fees. And he's also accused, that being the mayor, of using city funds to pay for a variety of personal expenses, such as maintenance of automobiles, shipping fees, other personal items, as well as using city vehicles to maneuver to or make his way on personal vacations or excursions. Today marks a week since the initial protest and the public revelation about the developments with the Johnson County Board of Education following the advice of their attorneys and others, and removing any and all reference of God, Jesus, or religion from their Christmas plays and activities. It also has been a week filled with a lot of activity on the forefront of those who are in objection to the matter, a lot of those individuals who are still picketing today. One week later, they are still standing determined to see, they say, the Board of Education in Johnson County change its course, and they're also sending calls out to parents and churches to join them alongside the roadway, and they're also sending a message out to the governor in hopes that he will weigh in on the issue as well. We are determined to get this reversed, this decision reversed. We want, you know, our Christian rights. And... We're standing, you know, for the children, too, of Johnson County. And we would also case. like to challenge these yes. parents. School's out this week, start next Monday, this Monday coming. We would like to challenge the parents. You that believe, bring your children out here Monday. Stand yes. with us. Churches, get your congregations together. Come yes. on out here, bring buses. Let's, let's go. You don't have to make signs if you don't want to make signs. We welcome you to stand with us.
The word has really got yes. out. That's what that's what we wanted. I don't think that the school system ever anticipated on getting any farther than the city limits with this issue. And I think it has went really worldwide. I've had numerous people talking about it. Yes. And this has really got out. And this has really started to open a lot of people's eyes. Joy Collins, yes. he deserves a pat on yes. the back. Yes, he does. The ladies are certainly right about it, garnering national attention, including an appearance by a Johnson County father and his daughter on Fox News this morning. I'm Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. In there. They're referring to Joey Collins, who we featured on this program last Friday, who, alongside with his daughter, Andrea, appeared on the Fox News Network this morning. Andrea, a W.R. Castle Elementary student, where the issue first arose, she said, brought about by the father of a kindergarten student. They were joined by their attorney with the Alliance Defending Freedom Organization, who says the Johnson County School District is only the latest to give in to pressure when the law actually says schools can include Silent Night and plays like a Charlie Brown Christmas as part of the holiday celebration. Going back to Johnson County, Cottle and Connolly tell me that they're encouraging everyone to attend the next Johnson County Board of Education meeting set for this coming Monday night, and that they're also hopeful to get word to our newly elected Governor Matt Bevan in hopes again, as I said, that he will weigh in on the matter. There is a board meeting Monday evening at 5 o'clock, and we need all of our supporters, Christian supporters, to be here with us and stand for Jesus. We want to flood that board office. We want to fix it to the line back here. Yes. And then Christians won't have to worry, you know, about this coming up again. Right. And Matt Bevan, I think he needs to put a voice in on this. I'd like to see him comment on it because he's uh -huh. new he's in and we would like him to issue a statement on it. The Alliance Defending Freedom Organization notified by letter the Johnson County Board of Education last week that they were encouraging the Board of Education and asking them not to give in to the demands of a single complaint, saying, quote, a Charlie Brown Christmas represented or represented, yes, my apologies, no violation of the so-called church and state, unquote, presented in the manner that was originally planned by the schools. They also offered legal assistance to the board. More headlines in a moment right now in McGoffin County Farm Bureau sponsored community calendar with a few reminders for the weekend. One for actually the holidays. Uh, Rumpke has called to let me know that on Thursday, Christmas Eve, your garbage will be picked up as well as on New Year's Eve, the following next Thursdays, two Thursdays that is, they'll be running but collecting garbage very early. No service on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, but they'll be running on Saturday over the weekend to collect your garbage. I'll remind you of that next week. Just wanted to get that out there tonight. New Life Worship Center is presenting their Christmas program, a gift from Santa, tomorrow at 6. The Half Mountain Church presents their Christmas program tomorrow at 6. The Emmanuel Baptist Church on Pleasant Hill does theirs Christmas program this Sunday at 6. From the Stinson United Baptist Church, they're having church services this Sunday morning at 11, a lunch following, and they're having their Christmas fellowship program as well. Uh, and that's going to do it for any announcements that I have to get out there this evening from what I understand. We do have some further announcements to make via tonight's funeral listings brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. A reminder that services are going to be held tomorrow morning at 11 in honor of 88-year-old Inez Step Montgomery of Sagersville who passed away on Wednesday of this week, preceded in death by her husband, Ramey. She survived by sons Manuel and Billy Jack and John C. Visitation continues this evening and prior to tomorrow morning services all at the McGoffin County Funeral Home Chapel. I was sad today to learn of the passing of a former school classmate of mine. Went to grade school together for years, and he moved away to, I think it was Paintsville thereafter, and he started a family uh, later on down the road. And sadly, I've learned that he's passed away, still with a great deal of family here. 44-year-old Jeff Holderby, Jeffrey Allen Holderby, passed away Wednesday of this week, survived by his wife, Marcia Hudson Holderby, daughters Chelsea and Marley, uh, as well as his father, Walter Jeffrey, and mother, Roberta Kuntz Miller. A celebration in life is going to be held Saturday, this Saturday at 1, at the Clark Legacy Center uh, at Brannon Crossing. 
near his home. And uh, they're also asking any donations can be made to the Deep Spring Elementary PTA in honor of his life and legacy. And we've also learned that 51-year-old Joe Douglas Helton of Milton, Florida, formerly of McGoffin, passed away on yesterday, excuse me, on today's date, the son of the late Holland Helton and Peggy Gamble Connolly, who survives. Arrangements are still being made at this hour. One announcement we didn't make for the following coverage is that of the funeral services which have been said in honor of a young Johnson County man who tragically lost his life so terribly early in a logging accident here in McGoffin County just earlier this week. 26-year-old Derek Matthew Hanna is going to be laid to rest this Sunday at 2 o'clock in the Staffordsville Free Will Baptist Church on Little Mud Lick Road in Staffordsville. Visitation began this afternoon at 4 and will continue all day tomorrow and until time of services on Sunday, once again at the Staffordsville Free Will Baptist Church. He passed away, of course, Wednesday, as we told you earlier in the week, after being involved in a fatal logging accident on 460. He survived by his wife. Lauren Meek Hanna, son Aiden Michael Hanna, and they were also expecting a second child. He's also survived by his parents, Daryl and Nancy Bush Hanna of Staffordsville, and a twin brother, Eric of Staffordsville, as well as two sisters, Kayla Hanna Burkett of Stambo and Ashley Hanna of Staffordsville, as well as a host of family and friends who will miss him dearly. Funeral services once again to be held this Sunday at 2 in his honor. And I know I had planned on having some basketball scores and schedules for you, but I'm running late, missing Andrew's game, and I'm also running late on time with a lot of information to squeeze in. Let me just real quickly tell you, uh, the Johnson Central Golden Eagles, the boys play tomorrow night on the road at Boyle County. As for the Lady Eagles, they're playing tonight, hosting Prestonsburg at home. That'll be an exciting game. As for the McGoffa County Hornets, the boys, uh, they are at Prestonsburg tonight in the High Tech Science Graphics Holiday Classic. They're playing Prestonsburg. As for the Lady Hornets, They'll be in action tomorrow night uh, to be announced. It is the holiday season. It's also, of course, tournament season as well. A lot of classics and tournaments being held throughout the holidays. The Lady Hornets will be playing in one. Uh, Morgan County for the boys. Uh, they are in action not for a few days, not actually until Monday of next week in the uh, Sauger Holiday Classic. The Lady Cougars will next be in action tonight. They're hosting Rose Hill Christian. Uh, Paintsville Tigers, they are Tonight at Round County in the Kentucky Bank Challenge, taking on Powell County, the Lady Tigers. Uh, they are on the road tonight, taking on Pike Central. Your weather forecast is the final bit point of business tonight. And well, it feels like Christmas out there today. I'm looking outside at the security monitor, seeing a few flakes or two, just a little light precipitation. Made it feel like Christmas finally. But it's not going to be that way next week when Christmas is actually here. Low of 25 tonight, partly cloudy. I'll look for a few flurries and some west winds whipping up 10 to maybe 17, 18 miles per hour at time tonight. It's definitely going to have a wind chill factor to it. Turning to your Saturday, sunny and 41. Uh, west wind around 9 miles per hour tomorrow. Back down to the mid-20s tomorrow night under clear skies. As for the latter half of the last holiday, the weekend before the holiday and Christmas, sunny and 52, warming on your Sunday with mostly cloudy skies late and a low of 42 Sunday night. Those clouds late Sunday are in lieu of a whole lot of showers possibly next week. It's going to be wet leading up to maybe through Christmas. 57 and showers in the forecast. On your Monday, Tuesday, a 50% chance of showers and 61. Showers likely, maybe some thunderstorms. Wednesday, 66. And I've got a 50% chance of showers, mostly cloudy, and 65 on Christmas Eve. And I hate that. Now, Flash is going to wrap up the last full week of programming before Christmas. I hope you have at least time to maybe sit and think about the time you don't have this holiday weekend. Indeed, Christmas is upon us. We're hoping so much that you have a safe, wonderful weekend ahead of the holidays. We'll be back for, of course, some programming through Wednesday of next week. And as always, it will be news just like tonight and every other night where you'll find something that you just can't literally see or find anywhere else but here on Your News Today. Thank you so much for being a part of our show. Have a wonderful night and an even better weekend. Thanks for watching.